Hey everyone, Cleaver here and welcome to my channel. Today I'll be trying to give you a spoiler free review of The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Now this is my first Samantha Shannon. She is also the author of the Bone Season trilogy, I think it is. Um, so in case you are interested in that, maybe find a review for that one as well. Um, the Prior of the Orange Tree is a standalone fantasy book. It is an epic fantasy, as you can see, it has dragons in it. So, we are following a culturally diverse world in which there are different nations that we uh, are introduced to, which all have their slightly cultural differences, but there are also some major cultural differences. There are mainly three different versions of the story that have uh, influenced the way that these different cultures see the world, the way that they see themselves in it, the creatures in it. So uh, about a thousand years ago there was this giant battle in which they tried to defeat a evil uh, worm or dragon called the Nameless One. Uh, and it's basically the result of how the storyline of how this um, creature got destroyed that has very differing versions that have had a big impact. So the countries to the west, for example, they have uh, this uh, legacy of uh, the knight and the damsel, and the knight was the one who defeated the nameless one. And as long as the queens keep on descending from this queen, the damsel, then um, the nameless one will stay locked away forever. The um, countries to the east, on the opposite, they have more of a legacy of dragons fighting amongst themselves. So being the dragons of the west versus the dragons of the east. And um, it are the dragons of the east who, in the great sorrow, as they called it, defeated the dragons from the west, including the nameless one, and therefore they uh, worship the dragons and the dragons become sort of their deities. And then in the south we have a different uh, sort of version of the knight and damsel story in which it was actually the damsel who destroyed the nameless one and the damsel who is therefore the big inspiration uh, for this culture. So the story is a multi-perspective uh, fantasy in which we follow more or less four points of view uh, and we are switching between a western view and eastern view at some point also the southern view gets involved and so uh, we get a very culturally rich and diverse story this way. Uh, the negative that I had about this was that um, at a certain point in the story uh, this this differing of perspective becomes slower, you know, at the beginning it's more like one chapter west, one chapter east, and sometimes you'll have two chapters in the same uh, part of the world, but that's like the maximum. Uh, at a certain point in the story it definitely feels like you're getting five to six chapters, maybe even in the same uh, part of the world, uh, which doesn't necessarily mean the same point of view, but still uh, it feels like the characters that are at that point in the other part of the world are kind of like neglected. It seems like they're just like waiting around, for uh, waiting for the story to get back to them and doing nothing in the meantime, or at least we are not introduced to what they've been doing in the meantime when we get back to them uh, eventually. Uh, so that I felt to be a major flaw, uh, also because like I was so used at that point to differing between the two opinions that I would like start to miss the other point of view uh, and so I feel like it would have benefited more from a richer variety throughout. So I think the storyline that is given the most importance is the storyline of the West, of uh, Queen Sabran, uh, who is kind of struggling as in uh, as I said before, there's this legend going down that as long as there is a female uh, heir from this first original damsel on the throne, then the nameless one will not return. However, Sabran has a very big fear of childbirth and uh, she also doesn't really want to get a man, you know, she's very much happy with the way she's ruling, um, but yeah, this is the expectancy of the people of course, and she's getting a lot of political pressure as well to marry somebody. Um, it is very much about her struggle with her role as a queen, and throughout the story also with um, the legacy she has been left behind. Um, we are less invested, I feel, and that I feel to be a true shame, in the story from the East in which we are following a young girl who is about to set out to become a dragon rider. Now at the beginning we get quite a bit of this, but uh, I feel like this storyline like peters down a bit as we get further into the story, which I felt to be a damn shame because I really wanted to... Uh, I really liked the dragon 
of the story and I would have actually preferred to have even more of like an understanding of the different types of dragons um, but I feel like even though dragons keep on occurring throughout the book that the dragons were really sold a bit short in this book um, what we do get is a very, some very nice examples of female empowerment and not all of these females carry a sword for example Queen Sabran uh, never I think never carries a sword at any point throughout the story and even though she's protected by guards and stuff like that she still manages to portray a strong woman but also a woman with flaws with fears and insecurities so a real character in that sense there's another character in there as well who uh, shows bravery and strongness without having to reach for a sword for example we also of course have the examples of strong females uh, leading with a sword also of evil characters who are strong females like the uh, empress of the pirate fleet for example so we get a very diversity of strong feeling characters which i find to be very well uh, established also what i find to be very well done is that there's a lot of uh, sisterly yeah, sisterly bonds, so a lot of sisterhood in there, you know, you have the Priory of the Orange Tree, which is basically a sisterhood. Um, you have uh, the Queen, who is a very much, um, very much has a sisterly bond with her uh, ladies of the bedchamber, things like that. There are, of course, some examples of, like, less nice girl-on-girl <laughs> -girl relationships however uh this is normal of course and it's something that should occur in the story you know you should have good relationships and bad relationships but it's very nice to see these sisterly bonds because a lot of times when you have multiple females in a story the relationship between these females is seen as something of like a lot of times it's used to portray jealousy or um, to have like this sort of like backstabbing between females it's very nice to see the sisterly empowerment the sisterly embodiment uh, represented in this story and so i very very much feel like it is a very good female fantasy you know a lot of people calling it the female lord of the rings um why not i also wouldn't give the lord of the rings five stars so uh i i feel like it is di very much different from the lord of the rings so i wouldn't necessarily compare it to the lord of the rings but it is also rich in culture the way that the lord of the rings is I just wouldn't go into it expecting the same type of uh, story as the Lord of the Rings because the Lord of the Rings is very much a brotherhood that's formed, that splits apart and in this case we uh, there's no like central sisterhood or anything like that, you know? There are acts of sisterhood, there are sisterly bonds, there are uh, female and female relationships and things like that. So I wouldn't necessarily make that comparison which has been made by others. But now I've already said that I find the structure to be somewhat flawed at some points. I also find pacing to my necessity. I also find that there are problems with pacing, you know. Uh, the beginning was a little bit slow paced. To me that wasn't necessarily a bad thing, you know, fantasies are often a little bit more slow paced at the beginning because you're establishing a world, you need to introduce characters, uh, you need to introduce readers to these different characters, to their different worlds, to the different mythologies that exist there, especially if you have a rich world like this one. Uh, and I was so intrigued by the world that I didn't necessarily feel it to be super slow paced. However, it, it, it is true that it took me a lot longer to get through the beginning than through the middle part of the book, for example. You know, the pacing is like gradually pick, picking up throughout the book, but that might give the impression that the final resolution part arrives too soon. Um, I think that that is about all I can say about the book without going into spoilers, so I will end my non-spoiler review here. So I would definitely recommend you try Priory of the Orange Tree. I would definitely, but I would also say like go into it knowing that at the moment it's very much hyped. A lot of people are saying that it's like wonderful, amazing, and it is good. I really, really think it is good. However, it has its flaws. You know, it's not the perfect book. It's not like it didn't blow me away or anything like that. But it was original and fresh. And even though it's a story that exists in many incarnations in the fantasy world, it is given a fresh perspective here and the world, and the world building is amazing in this one. So uh, if you're not a fan of world building, don't go into it, it's the best part of this book. So um, world building is very much central to the plot here, central to what, is to what can be enjoyed about this book. So 
I definitely think you need to have an appreciation for world building to enjoy it. But so, if you want to see my spoiler filled review, then uh, look out for it. It's coming in the f coming days, I hope. <laughs> It'll depend on my um, editing mode. And I must say, my editing mode was very low in the month of March. So, hopefully, in the month of April, it's picking up. So, uh, please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos. If you want to be informed about the uh, spoiler filled review coming up, then also click the bell icon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really uh, helps me out a lot and it's always nice to feel that somebody uh, really appreciates your video. So see you guys next time. Bye.